All right, we're just going ever. Mm-hmm. Hey, this is Evan Baxter here, and welcome to another episode of the Sit Down Podcast. Oh yeah, Bam. <laughs> done and done. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Welcome. Well, thank Welcome you. Welcome to Bellevue. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I, uh, I just found out that uh, you had quite a drive to make because I thought you, you were in Saskatoon. Oh, no, I'm living in Moose Jaw right now. Yeah. We're going to move up to the city here in August because my brother's going to school, uh, and that brings me closer to the music. So gotcha. why not? Gotcha. Hell yeah. 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 Um, well, welcome everybody at home and uh, people in house to this week with us. Uh, so, yes, Mr. Evan Baxter. That's me. Hell yeah. You've got a great thing going, man. And I know you've had a hell of a year so yeah. far, even though we're very early stages of the year. Yeah. Um, yeah. You just got I, started. I'm yeah. very, <laughs> yeah. I'm very honest to God. I didn't know you from a hole in the ground until that night at the Capitol Music Club in Saskatoon. Yeah. Um, so I'm very intrigued and interested on like how long have you been performing for? And, and doing your thing, and I'm kind of looking for I, I just a backstory. Be, before you do that, I just yeah. want to give a shout out to your dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dad. We got, <laughs> <laughs> we got uh, Evan's dad is behind our cameras, as you may know, the ones at home, that the last couple episodes, there's been some uh, video issues every now and again. Sometimes a camera will drop or something. So Evan's dad is our, uh, our, 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 our producer, producer. <laughs> this, this week. <laughs> so, <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> I got a promotion, he yeah. says. Um, so, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm very just interested. I would love to hear a little backstory of, like, what got you into music yeah, and, and why and how long you've been doing it, all that kind of stuff. Music's always been kind of an important thing to me, just listening and knowing the beat and growing up, like, even in elementary school, my parents were split and dad would come and get us on the weekends and he was big into music. And he got us hooked on Master of Puppets and Slipknot and Pearl Jam and all these great bands. Right. And it was just sitting in the back seat, tapping the console, find the BTEV. So I'd sit there and I'd tap along. And eventually we started school out with Dad. And we were living with him full time. And it was going great. And then the pandemic hit. So during the pandemic, my dad was working with a few other boys. There's an old band called Captain Midnight based out of Domain. And Sam Erickson, my dad's guitar teacher, was the front man for this band. He was the singer and the guitar player, and he had just recently passed away. Oh. So all the boys decided to get together and go, okay, let's do one more show as Captain Midnight. And my dad was actually picked to be the front man, the singer and the guitar player. He took Sam's role. And when that started happening, there was jamming in the basement. There was always music in the house. And it's like, Liam, why don't we do this? Like, we have all this free time during the day. So he was like, hell yeah. So one day we went downstairs, and he picked up a guitar, and he started learning. And I was like, okay, like, when I was little, I used to just keep the beat. So I'll start with the drums. No big deal. Like, it can't be that hard. (laughs) Turns out it's really hard. (laughs) There's a lot of energy, man. There's a lot of kicking going on. And it just... I did it for a while and I enjoyed it. And as Liam got more skilled and more skilled, it's like, well, I can't keep up on drums. And I like what he's doing. So I mean, Liam, Liam's your brother. Yeah, Liam's yeah, my older okay. brother. Yeah. So I started playing guitar too. And we just started off with the basics. Like our big beginner song was called Am I Evil? It's a Diamond Head song. Okay. We were really, really Meta- into Metallica does a cover of Garage it on Inc. You Bet. Hell yeah. Great. I love oh, that yeah, album. Man. I love that. It's a great album. I agree. Covered so many people shit co- all over it. And oh I think it's God. fantastic. It is amazing. Agreed. Man. All the songs are What do you good. think of St. Anger? I, oh, you saw that post from Beach Radio or what? No. I think Ooh. it was. No, maybe that was. N- That's the album you, people usually shit. I saw something on Facebook. Somebody was uh, kind of shitting over uh Saint Anger, fuel or load and reload. Load and reload. And I was like, yeah, and I was like, load and reload are are like one. 
the two best Metallica I know, albums. I know the one who is shitting over those albums is watching right now. I will not call you out on it, but uh, I loved those albums, You're lucky. man. I thought they were great. <laughs> now I'm intrigued who that is. Yeah, I'll tell you off air. Because I know that person too, bro. You Pro- do. Probably. No, even stuff like that, Saint Anger, that was actually a big shift for Liam and I, being able to find a dropped tuning, and then we started playing Saint Anger, and then it's, oh, well, Slipknot uses drop tunings. Megadeth uses drop tunings. Avenged uses drop tunings. And drop D just kind of became the common tuning in the house. <laughs> right. And we played for a good two years just as heavy and as fast as we could. And kept playing and kept playing. And we were part of this little band called To Be Determined. <laughs> we had a girl drummer from El Rose, Tara Sherwin. And she came and we played one show. We played... The Telemiracle in Domain. The Telemiracle in Domain in 2017. Okay. And we played three songs. We played When Will I Be Loved by Linda Ronstad, Knocking on Heaven's Door, and Bad Moon Rising, I think. And we only had those three songs, but we played those three songs over and over and <laughs> over again and tried to put on a show. But that was really the only performance that we did with that group, and it all kind of shifted apart. But I, I just kept grinding and grinding and grinding, and in my mind, it's like, well, I, I want to do this for a living. And if I want to do this for a living, i got to do it right. Yeah. So I finally sat down and had the conversation with Dad, like, hey, like, I, I want to do this. What should I be learning? So I started learning stuff like muddy waters like that's way back in the 50s Mm. in Mm. the 40s like older stuff newer stuff like the 90s stuff was a big big change for me i really really love alice in chains and pearl jam and nirvana and soundgarden and all those guys it just it completely shifted music for me in a big way and it affects the way that i play and after about another two years uh, Liam was graduating and it was the summertime and we're like all good like having a great summer and we find out that him and his girlfriend they're going to have a baby a and lot. I'm going to become an uncle and that kind of slowed down the music for him a bit and he doesn't really play all that much anymore but like when I'm home he'll still jam with me it's just it's one of those things he doesn't like being on the stage it's he wants to spend all of his time with his boy, and it's beautiful. Yeah. Those two yeah, are yeah. like two peas in a pod. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, Fion, my nephew, he's just, he's the biggest boy ever. He's, God, a little over a year old, and he's like, as hot <laughs> tail. Oh, height. really? Oh, oh yeah. Like, uh, just over a year? Yeah. Holy oh, smokes, wait. man. No, my older brother, he's six foot six. Oh, okay. So. Makes it gonna, makes sense. He's going to be a big boy. <laughs> so I'm he is excited. the father. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Um, that's freaking awesome. But I love how you said the 90s music was a, a big shift for you. Because oh, yeah. that's like, like I was born early 80s, but like in my teens in the 90s. And hell well, yeah, dude. The and yeah, for, for him, the 90s is for us the 70s. Yeah, which is also great, great yeah. fucking well, music, Well, and I too. find kids my age, they don't listen to stuff like that. Like going to high school and listening to the stuff that I listen to, like Metallica and Alice in Chains and... Godsmack. Uh, yeah, Godsmack. Yeah. <laughs> I love Godsmack. It just... I went to a small town. Everyone likes country music, right? Yeah. Right. So yeah, it just Saskatchewan. It made me push to be like, you know what? I'm going to listen to what I want to listen to, and I'm going to make that my sound. Yeah. And through sure. high school, it was the whole, well, Evan, you know, like, you, you have to pick a real job. Like, you have to figure out what you're going to do for your future. Pick a trade. Pick, pick anything. Just apply yourself to something. And instead of doing that, I went, you know what? Nah, <laughs> right. I'm gonna I'm gonna do music. Yeah. I'm gonna do music, and I'm gonna show everyone that I can do music. And so those last two months of high school was me really trying to be like, you know what, I I'm gonna be who I'm gonna be, and I'm gonna be damn good at it. This one is called "Lie to Me." Tell me you love me. Tell me you need me. Tell me every sweet thing you do to show me that I. All you'll ever need Hold me tight, kiss me again Tell me how you couldn't breathe without me And then go on, girl Lie to me again 
I've been blind for far too long All I wanted was a family But now you're gone You tell me to forgive you But I won't do a thing Just for you to lie to me again Say it's the first time that you've rehearsed your lines About how it's not your fault but mine It's the same damn story every time Hold me tight, kiss me again Tell me how you couldn't breathe without me Then go on girl, lie to me again I've been blind for far too long All I wanted was a family But now you're gone My friends, they all tell me to pick up the pace I'm a shy and Chevy I'm off to the race And I won't do one more goddamn thing Just for you to lie to me again And again and again and again and again Just for you to lie to me again I've been blind for far too long All I wanted was a family But now you're gone My friends, they all tell me To pick up the pace Got my Cheyenne Chevy I'm off to the race And I won't do one more Goddamn thing Just for you to lie to me Again and again And again and again and again Just for you to lie to me again Tell me you love me, tell me you need me Tell me every sweet thing you do to show me that I'm all you'll ever need You were saying how you started on the drums and you were like playing with your brother When did you know that you could sing? When did I know that I could sing? Oh, goodness. My first year playing guitar, I started trying to sing. And a big thing for me then was Chris Stapleton. And it still is. He blows my mind. I like, think he's he blows just, a lot of people's mind. <laughs> I got the privilege to go and see him like or almost, just almost partially no, front row in the Choking. pit. Really? And it was just... I'm sorry, I missed that. Yeah. I was totally... <laughs> totally he was, was, he was totally trying to be funny. About. It wasn't funny. Yeah, it wasn't <laughs> funny. Yeah. So I, I missed that last part. I apologize. Oh, yeah, no good. Uh, so I got the privilege to actually see him in concert a few years ago. Okay. And it was just... It's the most moving thing. Like, I've never been to a concert and sat there and teared up over a song and been like, God damn. Like, I was a mess at Chris Stapleton. He's, <laughs> he's like the guy that I wanted to sound like acoustically. I'm like, I, if I don't sound like him with my playing, I'm pretty much screwed. So that's all I played forever. Like the Traveler album, his first album. Mm -hmm. That was so influential to me. And I learned everything that I could of his. And that was kind of my sound for a while. And the first song that I remember sitting at the table and recording was a song called Fire Away. And it's a Chris Stapleton song. And okay. I was... I was still a kid. I was like 13, 14, and I got this high, pitchy voice <laughs> and trying to do my best. But at that point, it was like, you know what? I'm sitting at the table with my dad and my brother and my uncle, and we're ripping through tunes. I want to do this. Like, I really, really want to do this. This is – it made me see, feel a sense of purpose that I'd never really felt before. It's like this This is what I was made to do. Yeah. This is, this is exactly – what I was made to do. I grew up in a house surrounded by music all the time, and I always had it. It's just, when was I going to use it was my thing. Right. And COVID was, COVID was the perfect opportunity. There'd be days where we'd get up, and we'd go downstairs, and we'd play for 10 hours. We'd play all day. We'd come upstairs to eat, and we'd go back downstairs. And I'm pretty sure that we drove everyone in the house crazy, <laughs> but we got really, really good doing it. 
Hell yeah, dude. You're getting a nod from dad over there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, <laughs> so tonight, like, here you performed three amazing original songs. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, and, I'm, and I want, I'm curious to know, like, how the hell did you learn how to write a song? If you're always, like, jamming and everything, uh, playing in the basement and feeling it out, like, when did the actual creating and writing of your own stuff well, begin? I started writing riffs at early on, just riffs, just to mess around and warm up my hands and do whatever that I thought sounded cool. But those last two months of high school were the, okay, I, I have to make this happen. Like, this, there's no choice in it. This needs to happen for me. And I was pushing so hard, and I finally sat down, and I was in the computer lab of my high school. And that's actually where I wrote the show was in my computer lab in my high school, and I had a great computer lab teacher, Karen Baxter. Shout out to Karen Baxter. You did a hell of a job with me. You got me by, man. Is there is there relation there? Uh, yes, there is. It's... His grandfather is a cousin to her husband. His yeah. grandfather is a cousin to her husband. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. But no, and she was very much into the music thing, and she's like, oh, well... I get that you're finding you're falling behind in your school and everything, but I'm going to give you the 20 minutes this class to sit and work on your lyrics because I know that you need that. And she let me take my time and write. And sometimes it wasn't the, oh, you can write, I was writing in secret. But it, it was a big turn for me actually sitting and trying to write and bringing that home and being able to show dad and be like, hey, I wrote a song. I wrote a song, a full song, and I have guitar bits for it. And it was just such a different feeling. Like knowing that you've made something that you're proud of and it sounds good was just like, oh my God. A oh yeah, my a God. A little bit of a rush and yeah. then you wanted more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was like, I'm doing it. Let's keep going. Let's keep doing this. Let's keep writing. So since then, I've written three or four more songs and we're working on an album right now so hopefully start of September or November I'm not too sure when we want to release it it's just it all depends on the time but no th those last two months of high school were really the okay Evan let's let's, let's do, do this, this. Right. let's do this seriously and the fact that I'm dating a woman that is like hell yeah and she's all for it makes it even more rewarding mm -hmm. being able to come off stage and see the big smile on my dad's face and the big smile on her face and get the holy shit <laughs> yeah. he pulled it off again yeah. Yeah. good job bud hell yeah. yeah that that means the world to me and having guys like you out there that care about music like there's there's no one my age that i find takes it as seriously as i do like this is this is all I got, except maybe Kieran. Yeah, <laughs> no, Kieran. Oh, Kieran Garner, what an amazing guy! So He's, you guys are buddies, hey? Yeah, no, he let me open for him that first big show that he did at the Capitol, and it went really, really well, really, really well. And since then, we've gotten a lot closer. I've went and hung out with him. Shout out to Kieran. What you, you didn't know each other before. You I did know him before, actually. Oh, okay. Uh, my girlfriend's best friend at the time was dating him. Oh. So I got to know him that way, and I went to rodeos, and we sat down and plucked guitars a little bit. I didn't know him too well. And after they split, it was kind of like, oh, whatever. Like, I, I won't see Kieran anymore, but <laughs> boom. <laughs> yeah. There he is. He's writing music. He's yeah. making it happen. And it's just like, oh, my God. Like... I think we're each other's cheerleaders in that way yep. where it's like he releases something and it's like, oh my God, man, like that's so good. And he's played me stuff that he hasn't released yet and that he's just working on. And like he had me in tears the one time I went over and he's playing these songs. I'm like, God damn, man, <laughs> like that's a beautiful song. You have to record that. Uh, I don't know. It's like, dude, yeah. I'm oh crying. my, record oh my this. God, yeah. I'm crying. My God. Record it. <laughs> yeah. Like he just him and his boys are so unique in the way that they do things the way that they stop wait mid show and they're like you know what let's switch it up 
and they all switch spots. And yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> like, and they're still going and they're still keeping that beat. It's like, you know what? Hell yeah. Yeah. Keep doing what you're doing. Absolutely. No, those boys, they, they know what they're talking about and they know how to play for yeah. sure. Freaking rights. There Very is cool. uh, <clears throat> speaking of tears, there's one <laughs> song that you performed here tonight. And yeah, we had to, we had to, almost put a pin in it there yeah. when we that song was done pause a, a little bit yeah, little breather, um, yeah. i i freaking i, w- I was av- after you stepped out of the room i was telling mark i was like holy shit i just about ended up with that whole shoulder thing and <laughs> 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 like i almost ended up in one of those but uh that was and um like i told you before there were like <clears throat> I, I, my condolences mm-hmm. for for that happening Thank for sure you. Um, and I'm a recovering alcoholic. So anytime, well, not every time, but songs that hit me the hardest are typically, you know, when tragedy is a result of alcohol abuse and stuff like that. Uh, it, it just, it makes me feel like, holy shit, that was me, or that could have been me, or, you know, I was so close to that. And it just puts me in a, in a time in my life where i wasn't as fortunate as i am today and it just you know mm-hmm. it, it hit me fucking hard dude and i think it's a mm-hmm. great song man it, like mm-hmm. it's can you, can you talk about it or yes okay. i can it's i find that it's one of the most common tragedies that i hear about here just local saskatchewan is drunk driving accidents and it's just it's a hell of a shame yep and everybody's impacted by it like it's that one person in the community has gone not just their family's feeling it that whole community's feeling it Mm -hmm. and they're feeling that hurt and when i lost blair about two years ago that was that was really hard really really hard uh when i moved to beachy he was one of the only kids that was like yeah i'll take you under my wing and i'll teach you the ropes and like he was like a big brother and I really didn't picture another day without him. He was just, he was that person that you could talk to about anything. Right. He was that guy. You could just sit down. Like I'd, I'd lose my mind and I'd be screaming and mad and just losing it. And he'd be like, it's okay, bud. Just, just let it out. Just let it out. It's going to be all right. And when I went through my breakup, the one summer, he was he was there and he was taking care of me and making sure that I was okay mm-hmm. and making sure that I'm understanding like hey there's things that you can do to help you with this and he helped teach me a bit of a work ethic and he brought me out to the farm and taught me how to tag cattle and give them their shots and like there's just there's so many little memories that I have with him like it's kind of gross but packing my first dip for the first time, that's that's Packing a moment. my first dip, like uh, packing tobacco. Like oh, okay, your lap. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. And <laughs> he showed me that, and it just it completely changed my mind. It's mm-hmm. like he made me feel like I was a big kid. Yeah, yeah. And I was the short, chubby kid with braces <laughs> that no one really wanted to hang out with. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. So how, was he? He was older than you. Yeah, he was three or four years older okay. than me not that bad and he was just he was really there and like even we'd go out to the lake Clearwater Lake that's where we have our family cabin and he'd come by all the time because he worked at Clearwater and he'd pick me up and go to the drive-in and I remember the one day he came over and I was supposed to move wood for the fire before I left and I didn't and he came over and dad was like no you like you got to move the wood before you go and I was like, no, like, pardon my language, fuck this. I'm not, I'm not doing that. Like, I just, I want to go. And we're fighting, we're fighting, we're fighting. And Blair comes over and puts his shoulder on dad, his hand on dad's shoulder. He's like, I'll do it. Just let me take my little brother out. And that was a big moment for me, seeing that he saw me as a brother. And it's just... It's really hard not having him here because I know that he'd appreciate all of this so much. He'd love what I'm doing right now. Uh, he's watching. I, I would even go as far as saying he's here with us right now. Yeah. He's, he's here with you right now. I feel sure. him every time I play that song. I like to drink and I like to smoke. I want to 
do that Cause you think I'm a joke I took one long turn And now I'm feeling That it's getting worse Oh, with every wrong turn There comes a time You feel like a kid All you want to do is cry But now you're a man And all you can do Is put your face in your hand Oh, when you lose a friend I had a friend He was my brother He just had nobody slowing him down He didn't know it Until he had just about drowned that's when the liquor took him down Two trips around the sun What could I have done Would have taken your keys Begging brother please Oh just let me take you home Feels like days since my best friend was taken away. And I like to drink and I like to smoke, but don't drink and drive, man. That shit ain't no joke. It's taking my friend, and oh, what I would do just to see him again. Also, this one. For him. I had a friend, he was my brother, he just had nobody slowing him down. Dude, it's, um, oh. is it, so when you do play that song, yeah. when you perform it live, how... How difficult is it to, to push through that? I played it the first time when I opened up for Aaron Pritchard and Corey Marks and Matt Lang. And it was it was really hard. It was really hard not crying on stage because you got to yeah. gotta be professional and yeah. a performer. But all that's going through your head is my friend's not here. My friend's not here. My friend's not here. What the hell? My friend's not here. Yeah. And it's... It's hard to get through it, but I do it every time for him. Absolutely. Because I know that he deserves it. He he was the most loving person that anyone could have met. What was uh what was his last name? Flatroot. Blair Flatroot. Blair Flatroot. I would could we can we dedicate this episode in his memory? Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Sweet. We'll do that. I like it. Let's uh, let's change topic. If that's yeah, that uh, Aaron Prichette's uh, oh, yeah. gig. Oh, I was so nervous, dude. I, I thought you fucking killed it, man. I pulled <laughs> up and I thought that like this is this is just opening up for guys that are higher than me. It's no big deal. Like, just treat it like a normal gig. And I pull in and there's a goddamn tour bus. <laughs> 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 and I was like. Yeah. This this is happening, really. Yeah. Okay. So I head inside and I'm getting all set up and I'm it's just about time for me to go on and I'm all shaky, right? And I think honestly this is the most nervous that I had ever been before a show. And I go out there and I play my songs and I hate to say it, but my one single that I have released the show, that was hard to get through. Going up there with the nerves, as soon as the nerves hit me, I go dry. And that's a big pusher for me. I push really hard on the show. And messing up that one song, at least I thought that I messed up that one song. I thought that that killed my whole show. And I went back, and the boys were so cool about it. 
they were like, yeah, and like that sounded great, man. That sounded so good. Like you don't have to worry. Just keep grinding, keep doing what you're doing. Like you're going to get there. It's going to well, be all right. I, I was there. I'm going to be honest. I didn't notice any mess ups. That's that's actually a, a very common thing with artists. We pick apart our own music so much. And you know it so well. Mm-hmm. So if you if you do mess up, then mm-hmm. you know you well, messed I'm, up. But nobody else in the room. Well, and I'm the only one that knows I'm messed up, right? Yeah. yeah. Is everyone else yeah. is listening, and I'm sitting up there like, God damn it, <laughs> and everyone's still just sitting and listening to the music. Yeah. They're still having a good time. Like it's, well, it's right? yeah. Yeah, but no, was, it was it was such a privilege and being able to go back there. I, I had merch made and I got hats and T-shirts. So I went back there with three hats, one for each of the boys. I'm like, this this is my way of like thank you for right. letting me do yeah, this. Yeah. Hell yeah! And right away they were like, oh shit! Like Kate, like come in. We're gonna take a picture and mm-hmm. all of a sudden we're off to the merch table and I get to pick something out for free. Yes. Oh sweet. <laughs> and it was like this is. This is cool. What what did you end up picking out? Because I bought some merch off those boys. I got a nice black Aaron Pritchard sweater. Yeah, I got the. Uh, got one too. I got the the black bunny hug. Yep. It's kind of like camo a little bit. I oh, think. nice. Um, but yeah, the dark one, and then I got a Corey Marks uh, trucker hat. Nice. Yeah. No, I wish I had brought cash with me. I wanted to get a little bit of everything because. Like I'm opening up for the big guys, right? I want yeah, to yeah. be able to remember. Dude, but they got a their tour bus got a parking ticket that night. Too. I know. I talked <laughs> to the parking guy. I talked to the parking guy because he was giving me shit and dad shit. He's like, you know, if I if I can't see your ticket, you're you're getting a ticket. I'm like, okay, like I'm and I'm trying to figure out how am I gonna get this ticket. Well, I ain't I ain't got coins, and I ain't got a credit card. Yeah. So I go over there with my debit card. And I'm trying to figure it out. Won't accept debit cards. I end up having to go into the Capitol and ask someone, hey, do you have any spare change yeah. so I don't get a $50 parking ticket? Oh, my God. Yeah. Why, why don't they accept debit cards? I don't parking. Know. Saskatoon. Why don't you accept debit cards? Right. And what about us kids driving around? We ain't got credit cards or loose change. Everything's online now, man. Yeah, exactly. And Saskatoon debit guys or whatever parking meter guys the meter outside the capital isn't hasn't been printing out receipts for like a week Ooh. So, yeah, man, i like to keep my receipts on all yeah. transactions spent get on it indeed um, right like, god damn it you're quick to get <laughs> a ticket. yeah um no i thought you did great that night no i i really enjoyed your i set. really enjoyed myself i had a great time it was it was a big drive up there, and I was really nervous the whole drive. But as soon as I got off the stage, it was like, <sighs> done. I'm done. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's it. Seems like this whole world's gone crazy. And there's just nothing we can do Maybe it's all just in my head But I can't think straight enough to think it through But today It makes everything alright And today Is the day that I take flight Nobody's holding me down It's a bit of a different feeling Knowing you won't drown These are just some things I've come to know From when I put pen to paper And let the music flow After all, this world ain't so crazy And now everybody sings my songs They only know me for my music But that's how I've wanted it all along Cause today 
makes everything all right and today i just know there's something coming my way because nobody's holding me down it's a bit of a different feeling knowing you won't drown you gotta make this life your own before you're taking turns and you don't know where to go These are just some things I've come to know From when I put pen to paper and let the music flow Seems like this whole world's gone crazy And there's just nothing we can do I want to talk about recording a little bit. Yes. So like where where have you been recording and what do you like what's your process for that are you doing it yourself or are you I, going to a studio or I'm not what's the deal there? I'm going to the beautiful studio of Matthew Faka at Faka Audio with one Mike Sask hell yeah shout out Matt Matt yeah, we, want man. You, uh, we want you here to yeah. come hang with us one yeah night. man How about next week yeah <laughs> sounds like a plan heck yeah but no, he just, I love recording with Matt. That first song, the show that we went and recorded, he put a lot into that, and that was kind of the, okay, let's see if you're serious about this. And as soon as I kept on writing, he was like, yeah, I'm in. I'm so in. It's and like, w- yes. Which song was that? Uh, the show yeah, yeah, was okay. my first song. Yeah. And he put so much into everything. Like, he's finding guitar players, and he is a madman on the bass. I have never seen someone move like that on a guitar or bass before. <laughs> he just, he has it. And he's like, oh, we need a fill? I have the fill. It's like, whoa. Right, <laughs> right. Like, from? he just, he catches on so fast. And the stuff that he builds, it's like, okay, we'll do that. Okay, we'll do that. Why are we doing that? Oh, that's why. Yeah, Holy yeah. shit. Well, that was, that, yeah. <laughs> like, like he, we were there... The night you recorded your Sask One Mic. We yeah. Were th- what were we doing? Oh, they had just invited us there just to come yeah, hang out. Yeah, just to come and yeah. chill. And check it yeah. out. And, and you were recording that night too. Yeah, that's when I um, did the acoustic version of Lie to Me. Yeah, 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 exactly. And just watching Matt work, I found mm-hmm. very intriguing as well. It was like, you know, something doesn't sound right here. And just his ability to like... Just adjust the speaker yeah. a little bit. One and he's everything. like, Boom. Yeah. I, I got he it. Moved, like, he moved the monitor like... I don't know, two inches. Oh, yeah, like, sounds perfect. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, he's <laughs> that guy. If he tells me to do something in the studio, you don't fucking argue with him. You just do it. You just do it because you know it's for the greater good. Yeah. It's like, you, I know that this is going to sound so awesome when we're done. Hell yeah, I'll do it. Friggin yeah. He moves quickly and too, hey? He's like he's on point. It's like he, and he's even his got jokes, it. Matt. You're you should he's, almost be a comedian, dude. dude. <laughs> Doctor Groove, he's a funny guy. He's <gasps> he's awesome to work with, and he actually this last time I went up and recorded, he allowed me to stay in his home for the weekend. Oh, and what a great experience! Just spending some time with my producer. Like he's such a great guy, and he's so expressive with everything that he writes, and he's moving and he's grooving and he's just. He's constantly grooving. He's sitting there. He's like, rad, <laughs> rad, cool, man, rad. Yeah, yeah he's like, good he's shit, just, dude. He's got it. Like, everything seems like he can just pull it out of his back pocket and go, ha ha. Yeah. Yeah, look what I got. Huzzah, here you go. <laughs> it's like, yeah. <laughs> no, he's, he's awesome to work with. I would, I would recommend Matthew Faka to anyone that wants to take music seriously. Go and spend a day with Matt. Hell yeah. Go see what it's about. When I first met him, I was going on, like, learning how to record in the studio, learning how to do that sort of thing. And just the way that he had it. And he was like, I know everything that I'm talking about. Absolutely everything about every fact. It's like, holy shit. Like, I've never met someone that smart with music. Frickin' right. Yeah. This episode is sponsored by. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sask one mic. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, audio. Yeah. Frickin' right. So, 
your experience obviously was a great one. Oh yeah. Um, how many songs like do you currently have out there that are released right now, recorded uh, and released? Uh, recorded and released, only the one. I just have the show right now. I'm gonna build up all the rest of these songs, and I'm gonna drop a full album. Okay. And that full album will not have the show on it because that was my first single. I want a full album. I don't want something that someone's already heard on something brand new. Gotcha. I want them to be able to listen to it and go, this is something different. Right. This is something new. This is something exciting. So what, what kind of, I don't want to put you in a genre or a style or anything, oh, yeah. but what, what's the vibe for that uh, album? I like rock and, rock and roll and country. I try, I'm trying to bring that 90s grungy feel back to an acoustic -y, country feel i want to combine it again i want to bring grunge back i want people to be like yeah it is okay to write sad songs and just yeah. build a pit in yourself and start writing and writing yeah. and writing because that's what the greats did yeah. like lane staley of alice in chains he he's just oh my god good the way that he writes his lyrics and how deep he gets alice in chains just completely shifted everything for me, the way that I write, the way that I play. It just, it made me feel like, hey, if I'm writing music, I need to touch people how he did. Mm -hmm. Like, when I'm gone, I want people to think of me when I'm gone as a musician and as a really good one. I don't want people to look back and be like, oh, well, he was, he was a kid from Saskatchewan. He grew right. up in Domain. Yeah. I want them to go, holy shit, that's Evan Baxter. Yeah. And it sounds crazy right now, like I'm only a year into this and I'm only 18 years old, but I just, I want it. I want it so bad. I got a hunger for this music, man, yep. and nothing's going to stop me and nothing's going to hold me back. Oh, I, this, I, is, I, this is me. Dude, I, I love that. Yeah. I love that. I think, I think uh, you're most definitely well on your way, um, and I do want to, I want to wish you additional success over top of what you've currently had this year Thank like you're you. you've shot up very quickly on our mm -hmm. radar and i know you've got a lot of things coming up here and yeah the, the, it's all good good things man and i'm just very very excited for you and mm -hmm. honored to be able to say that i actually know you yeah thank so you I, I think i'm honored awesome. to know you guys if, if you keep doing like, what you're doing you're gonna you're gonna do very i well. think so i too. hope so yeah no with without you guys at the open mic and at the Capitol, honestly, I don't think I'd be where I am today. You guys made it feel very homey, and you guys well, made me feel very, very comfortable. So you guys, you guys changed a lot for me and made me feel comfortable. So I just want to thank you guys sincerely for that and Hell for yeah, giving man. me the chance to express myself. Appreciate Dude, that's that. yeah. that's. Well, I I appreciate that. Yeah. I have very very kind words. That were unnecessary, I'm going to add. Oh, they're but, necessary, but man. Yeah. They're yeah. necessary. You boys do a lot for all the musicians around man, here. Man, we're just having a right. shit yeah. ton of fun, dude. <laughs> no, yeah, we just. <laughs> but that's the best part is it doesn't feel like work. Right. All of it is just fun. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. even, even when I'm recording, that's not work. Yeah. That's not work for me. Yep. Like, all of this is just, it's so beautiful and it's so fun. And I just, I want that to keep it's, going. It's like yep. stacking the, the yeah. memories and, and enjoying the experience and, and just yeah. living life, man. And just like, doing and what Joel we Joel and I yeah. have, have been talking about this, like this podcast. We've been doing this for four years now. And every time we, we keep reminding each other, like, if this becomes like a job and it's no more fun, we just pull the plug. Yep. Yeah. So four years later, we're still doing it. Yeah. Well, and that's totally understandable. If it's feeling like work and it's feeling like a hassle, then yeah, we've said mm -hmm. there there could be like one or two views on these videos, and we'd still be doing them because we're oh, just yeah. that's how much fun yeah. we're having. Well, no, it's and like I tell my buddies all about it at home. I'm like, these guys at Funky Moose, like they do some really cool shit. <laughs> and I've shared your Instagram page with all my buddies in Dinsmore and all my buddies in Beachy. And they're checking you guys out, and they're like, "Whoa! Like you're going to see, you're going to do a podcast today with these guys." Yeah. And I'm like, "Yeah, I am." <laughs> <laughs> well, shout out to all Evans boys out there. Yeah, yeah. and girls probably, um, and girls. Yes, uh, <laughs> Evan, we're. I, I want you to know, man. We are 100% in your corner, man. We yeah. got your Hell back. Yeah. If there's I'm ever anything 
that that you need a hand with or, or you want to know something from us, please just hit us up, man. We Thank consider you, you boys. part of the herd. You are now family and you have an open door policy here. Anytime you want to come back and just yep. shoot the shit with us, man, just hit us up. We'll make it happen. Hell yeah, you have man. My word of on course. That, you're you're a great you're a great kid. You're a humble man, and I have so much fucking respect for you, dude. And Thank I, you. And I, I wish so you all the best for you guys. In your career, man. You guys really took me under your guys' wing and let me do my thing. So sweet. Thank you. So yeah. before we go, just tell everybody in that camera where people can find you, uh, etc. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Evan Baxter HGM Music, Homegrown Music. And then there's a Facebook page run by my father, Kurt Baxter, and it's called the Homegrown Music Page. The Homegrown Music Page is where all of my live recordings and everything that I'm recording and all the pictures that we take, that's where they all go. My Instagram page is more personal, talking to you guys, talking to Matt, like mm -hmm. just getting to know other musicians, right? Right. And I, I really like how it's going the whole social media thing when i started off it was complicated <laughs> so complicated and now it's just it's flowing it's going it's yep. doing its thing and being able to look at the facebook and seeing that there's 10 15 people commenting on everything that we post is like oh my god like people actually care people are listening and to know that my home crowd cares that's that's a big thing for me was trying to prove myself to home. Right. Was being able yep. to show everyone in Beachy and Jermaine, hey, I can do this. Yeah. I can really do this. And I'm and good this, at it too. Yeah. 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 And being able to say that like, yeah, I feel like I am a good guitar player. Yeah. I feel like I am a good singer. Those, those aren't things that I used to be able to say. And that's kind of nice. Yeah. And being given all these chances coming up like May 30th, I'm opening up for Kieran Gardner again. Nice. At the Capital Music Club. Yep. Get tickets. <laughs> uh, we're also doing June 7th. That is my very first headliner show. Oh. So and where I'm is that? The Capital. Oh, okay. So I'm hoping to have about a two-hour set or an hour 45. And we're going to shake it up, man. Hell yeah, dude. And coming up, actually, on April 19th, I am with Adam Johnson and, oh my goodness, Josh Stump at the Coors Event Center, and I get to do a 20-minute acoustic opening set. And Matthew Fack is actually going to be joining me to oh. be another acoustic player. Oh, beauty. So Very if you cool. guys want to come and see a great acoustic duo and some great country artists, come down to the Coors Event Center April 19th, and we're we'll going to turn it up there. to 11. We'll probably and be there. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Absolutely. Count us in. Hell um, yeah, man. We will have, we'll have the links to all that in the description uh, to this video, you guys. All right. Thank you again, Oh, Evan. of course. Thank you, thank boys, Thank you, for Mr. Having Producer, me. in the back there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and thank you to the, uh, those of you at home. And uh, before we go, don't forget to like and subscribe mm -hmm. and ring that bell for notifications. And uh, we'll see you see guys you next week. Next week. Right. Thank you again, Evan. Thank you, boys. Hell yeah, man. Right on. Beauty. Da 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 da